Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Mandeep and in today's video, we are going to discuss about what is multicollinearity, how we can detect it and how we can solve it. So guys, if you remember, uh, when we create logis, uh, sorry, uh, linear regression model, we have few assumptions to make. And one of, the, one of those assumptions is that we always assume that whatever the data that we are uh, consuming for uh, the linear regression model, uh, that data do not have multicollinearity. Whenever when I say multicollinearity, multicollinearity means that the independent features they do not have strong correlation between uh, each other. For example, a, so, uh, a short example I'm going to take tell you that let's say uh, uh, a boy has some pocket money. So uh, and. Uh, his and his uh, pocket money is directly proportional to whatever his father uh, earns. So if his father earns more, then he or she might be having more pocket money uh, rather than if uh, his father is uh, earning less, then he or she will be uh, having less pocket money. So there is a strong relationship between pocket money and the salary or the earning amount of his father. So this is uh, this represents that these two variables or these two things, uh, these two variables have a very strong correlationship. So such type of things, if we have uh, present in our data set and we are creating linear regression, so it is not an ideal situation. This is a problem. And how we can solve it and how we can detect it, this uh, video is all about that. So let's get started with the practical implementation of all this using Python. So uh, before starting, I am going to tell you that this is the data set that I am using in this exercise. Uh, car sales, I have downloaded it from the Kaggle website and I will drop the link for this uh, data set into the description of this video. So now let's get started. Very first, in the first, I am just importing the pandas library and I am reading my CSV file, which I just downloaded from this website. and. Uh, if I using head function, if I uh, take a quick look on my data, this is how my data looks like. So this data is about uh, about cars. They are like manufacturer, model, sales in thousands, yearly sale value, vehicle type, whether it is a passenger or not. How what is the price, engine size, horsepower, wheel base, width, height, width length, and there are many more uh, columns we have. So in this exercise, uh, let's say we have this data set. In this exercise, we are going to determine, let's say in these so much of columns, which columns are uh, have problem of multicollinearity and how we can detect it. So to detect multicollinearity, we have two methods. One is the uh, correlation uh, matrix and the other one is the VIF, variance inflation factor. I'm going to uh, show you both one by one. So next, what I'm what I'm just doing is I, I just imported the libraries. And uh, as I told you that using correlation uh, metrics, we can see how each variable is correlated with each other. Correlation score always varies from minus one to one. I'll show it to you. So here I'm just importing the libraries to plot them. I'm defining the plot size like how much, how big figure I want. And then I'm just using SNS library, Seabone library object and using heat map, I'm passing the DF dot core. Uh, DF is my data frame and score, this is a function, inbuilt function, and it will give me the correlation of all these variables. And then the, I'm just plotting it. And once I plot it, I'll show it to you. This is how it looks correlation of coefficient predictors. Uh, I have covered this uh, this thing of the, um, correlation matrix in my previous videos as well, but let me uh, quickly brief it over here. All the values on the diagonal, they have value one because uh, you can see that sales in thousand uh, is highly correlated with sales in thousand. So each variable is highly correlated with uh, itself. 
always so you can see that all the values in the diagonal are always one and uh, above the diagonal and below the diagonal values are always same for example you can see that here uh, year resale value year resale value which is this is minus 0 0.28 with respect to with respect to sales in thousand so you can see that year resale value and sales in thousand this is minus 0 0.28 and if you see on the other hand side uh, on the other side of the diagonal you would be able to see year resale value is here and uh, the other one is sales in thousand sales in thousands in sales in thousands is here so you can see that uh, mine you can see that this value is same minus 0 0.28 and minus 0 0.28 this represents that year resale value and year resale value and sales in thousand has negative correlation negative correlation means when one variable will increase other other variable tend to decrease the same way um, if there is a positive value among the two well uh, two variables then that means both the variables will uh, increase uh, if one will increase the other will also increase if one will decrease the other will also decrease but now out of so much values now we have to identify which uh, which parameters or which independent variables have a uh, high uh, correlation uh, here as a threshold we are taking as uh, value 0 0.8 so any value which is near to 0 0.8 or minus 0 0.8 um, we can consider those as highly correlated or uh, highly correlated features or they have problem of multicollinearity so if we take a look on here we can see that this engine size engine size which is this one 0 0.82 and power per power performance factor which is power per factor it has a value of 0 0.82 that means engine size and power performance factor are highly correlated with each other and they also make sense the same way price in thousand is uh, 0 0.9 uh, with respect to power per factor that means if my power performance factor is high then my price is also high it is uh, th this also makes sense the same way year resale value um, is uh, 0 0.83 and here power performance factor is 0 0.83 uh, so we can say we can we, here we can also see that this also have multicollinearity so uh, out of this matrix i am taking values uh, of those uh, variables whose uh, correlation value is greater than or near to 0 0.8 so from the heat map we can identify strong relationship between so these are the variables there is a strong relationship between power performance factor and horsepower as i showed you just earlier which is this power performance factor and uh, this power performance factor and horsepower horsepower is this one so you can see that 0 0.99 almost one so these are very uh, strongly correlated features the same way fuel efficiency and engine size this is fuel efficiency and this is engine size which is minus 0 0.73 that means if my fuel efficiency will increase my engine size will decrease and the other way around as well and the similar way these are uh, we have identified these are the uh, independent variable which have the problem of uh, multicollinearity this uh, with the help of correlation matrix now the same thing uh, we uh, the, there is another way as i told you earlier we which is variance inflation factor we can calculate it variance inflation factor for each variable and then we can identify based on the value of that variance inflation factor and then we can identify uh, the values which have uh, which are the independent variable which have a high multicollinearity so for the same uh, what i am just doing is a variance inflation factor is present into this library in into this uh, library stats model and i have just imported it and then <clears throat> we need a constant while creating a, a variance inflation factor so that's why i have imported this as well now i have created a function because i am going to use this thing again and again 
so uh, what i did is i created a function where i will be passing the features independent feature for which i want to calculate the uh, variance inflation factor which is vif value and i will pass the data frame of those uh, i will pass those features and then what i am doing uh, for those features i am creating a data frame and i am creating one more column into that data frame and uh, which is term termed as intercept and i have taken its value as one this is a constant value uh, because while calculating of variance inflation factor we need a constant so that's why i have taken it as here as a one now i have created a pd dot data frame i have created one more data frame vif and inside this vif i have uh, i have created a column variable name and all the values will be uh, the column name of whatever i have passed here and if there is some missing value i have dropped them and after dropping them here what i am doing is uh, whatever the values have been passed i am just calculating the variance inflation factor of that using that value and putting into this v and putting into this v and i am just and also i am making sure that this is this is this this line and this line are same so i i was doing something uh, for checking myself so this line and this line are same so uh, i'm putting those values into uh, one more column vif and uh, i'm not taking values where a variable and intercept value are same so let me run this and then you would be able to see the values uh, for this so here you can see that uh, for these uh, so i have uh, as we have as we have finalized that uh, from correlation using correlation matrix that these factors so these these columns have high multi uh, high correlation value so what i did here is that i just pass these columns and using those values i calculated the vif of it and then i just put them into a data frame which is this one so for each column i calculated the value you can see that uh, there is a very high vif value for force power which is 90 which is very high power performance factor again it this is 80 this is very high and um, curb weight which is 5.79 this is also considered high, as high in this scenario we are taking values of vif which are greater than 5 uh, we are take we are considering them as two large so what we will be doing we will be uh, kind of uh, we will be kind of uh, taking care of those well uh, those features for which vif value is too much high so what we are going to do um, one more thing here is uh, one more thing too important here guys is that uh, any rookie will uh, will what they will do that okay these features have their uh, their vif value as too much high so we are going to drop them never do that uh, we should always uh, drop one by one and at uh, at each iteration we should take a look on how vif is changing so for example in this scenario what i am going to do here the highest value of vif is for horsepower right so very first of all I am going to drop this horsepower feature, and then I will again calculate the VIF value, and we'll see uh, what is the impact of dropping the horsepower column uh, on the data set and how the VIF has updated. So let me run that. So this is here. Now let's say if I drop it. Uh, now here you can see that from considered features, I have removed horsepower. And then again, I am calculating compute VIF. So as I shared with you earlier, compute VIF is a function which I created here. Um, in this function, I'm just passing the column names and doing some calculation. Based on those calculation, I'm calculating the VIF and making a data frame and then returning that data frame. So here you can see that 
after removing this horsepower i am passing those considered features that means uh, i removed the horsepower and then again i calculated the vif for all all these variables again now you can see that i dropped the horsepower and you can see that power performance factor value also has come down which is 3 point earlier it was 80 now once i dropped it once i dropped the it's highly correlated feature which is uh, horsepower now its uif also has come down so now what we can see that here we can see that all of the values have come into our range uh, which are less than five except this curved weight this now what we are going to do we are going to drop this column as well and we will calculate the value again now i drop the curb uh, sorry hinge and size and then uh, you can see that uh, here the value have come very less and you can the same way you can still our curb weight is higher what we can do is we can drop this as well so let me do it and show it to you now what i am doing i am dropping the curve weight and then again calculating the vif value now you can see that now each and every each and every uh, feature has value under the permissible limit of vif now they do not have a very much strong relationship assume that the scenario when we have identified that okay these five or or six columns have high vi value we should drop them so if we have done that we have lost uh, other important information as well so never do that um, whenever you find higher vif we should drop the columns in the descending order first we drop the column uh, which has very highest vif then calculate the vif again and after dropping it uh, the vif gets updated if the value comes in the range of your accepted range then you can continue with the data set so this is all about for today's video um, what is multicollinearity how to detect it to detect it we have two ways correlation matrix and vif value calculation and how to solve it we can solve it uh, by dropping the columns which have very high vif uh, and in the descending order first drop the column which has highest one then check calculate the vif again and then uh, drop the next highest one and the so on so forth until you comes into the permissible range that's all for today's video guys uh, stay tuned uh, for more such interesting videos on machine learning thanks and bye take care